Hey, welcome back. A couple of big stories in electric vehicle stocks. Rivian Automotive made its debut on the NASDAQ Wednesday as its share price surged 29% in its first day of trading. Shares were originally priced at $78 that the night before the IPO, but opened at $106 before stabilizing to close out the day. But Thursday proved to be another stellar day for the Amazon and Ford-backed EV startup as it saw shares pop as much as 22% on the second day of trading. That put its overall valuation over $100 billion, eclipsing auto heavyweights Ford and General Motors. Think about that. These companies have been around forever, but still well below the world's most valuable car company, Tesla. And speaking of Tesla, CEO Elon Musk has apparently made good on selling a large chunk of his Tesla stock. Financial filings released Wednesday showed the world's richest man sold nearly $5 billion worth of his stock. Musk, of course, has been made a big show of selling of these stocks to pay taxes related to options that were coming due as he asked his Twitter followers to vote on whether he should sell 10% of his holdings in Tesla. Now, it should be noted, of course, that Musk still holds more than 166 million shares in the company. Joining us now to discuss this and some other market-related news is Michelle Schneider. She's a partner and director of trading research and education at MarketGage.com. Always a pleasure, Michelle. I, I want to start with Rivian. Uh, is this an overvaluation here? I, I, I know they have an order for 100,000 delivery trucks from Amazon for delivery in 2030, and they have a lot of momentum behind them, but is it really worth more than a company like Ford, which actually delivered more than 4 million cars last year? Probably not, but let's take a look at the company itself. So first of all, it's been around since 2009, and so far they've only produced a few hundred cars. So it's definitely a lofty goal to think that they're going to be able to create that many cars. I mean, we look at something like Ford in terms of your question as far as, far as what's it worth compared to Ford. Ford delivered 4 million cars, Tesla 2 million cars. So I like the fact that it came up at a time when electric cars are just hot, hot, hot. The Ford stock's been going up along with General Motors. But they're valuating it, let's say, 66% over what Honda is worth, for example. So there's a few things that they would have to do in order to really maintain this level of valuation, which was more like $120 billion, adding what happened to the stock price today. Number one is they would have to certainly be able to produce these cars and circumvent the, the chip shortages that we're seeing. I love the fact that they're calling it the mini-me Tesla, but that means they also have to come up with two and a half times more than what Tesla is already promising to produce. And there's a tremendous amount of competition. Globally, we know Tesla has really got that market locked down, and everybody's jumping into the EV space. So you've got BMW, Volkswagen, uh, besides you know the Honda company, then Lucid and Neo, some of the newer companies. So I would say that right now, this pickup truck that is really out there as the end all be all, probably at some point will the whole thing will step back and we'll get more realistic valuation in time. And what do you make of Elon Musk selling $5 billion in stock? It was kind of assumed that the whole Twitter poll was just a show when he was going to do it anyway, right? Yes, because of tax purposes, he has to. Once he exercises options, he has to pay a big tax bill. Now, remember, Tes uh, Musk does not get a salary from Tesla. So this is the way he makes money. And so I love the, the PR stunt. I mean, he's known for that for many, many reasons. But really, right now, he only sold half of what he said he was going to sell. And he has a lot more stocks, as you mentioned, of 160 million shares more, with a lot of those options that don't come due until next August. So he's got time. We'll see what happens. But I like the fact that at least he used some transparency, and it gave people who were heavily long the stock an opportunity maybe to lock in some profits as well. And it's interesting when you look at the two companies, you're looking at you know an EV kind of startup that's getting their name out there more going public versus uh, Tesla, which is obviously kind of the name behind electric vehicles right now. And you go, you know, what are they going to have to do to grow? Well, you know what, you might need an Elon Musk <laughs> to be able to grow because his personality certainly gets the name out there quite a bit. Now, I want to hit on what we were talking about earlier in the show, which is inflation. Is there concern that this could lead to a correction in the markets as the Fed starts to wind down some of that easy monetary policy and prices continue to rise? Well, it would be remiss to say there isn't a concern, but the question is, will it happen?
And so what's really interesting is that I believe that the Fed is really holding on to the notion of transitory inflation. And there's some signs out there that means that they could potentially be right. I personally don't think so. But if you're looking at it from the Fed's eyes, look at the dollar. The U.S. dollar has skyrocketed in the last couple of days. So if you're looking at it, the dollar versus inflation, generally the, the uh, conventional thinking is that the dollar is weak in the face of inflation. Instead, the dollar has actually gotten stronger against the euro and some other currency. Number two is, if you look at just where inflation has hit, you can make a case for transitory. I think that the Fed is going to sit back on its laurels. Right now, the long bonds in particular are mm -hmm. still underperforming the SP 500. That's a big thing. But you've got to watch gold and silver here, because if they really start going parabolic, I think that's when the Fed will go, hmm, maybe we need to be a little bit more aggressive. But they're threading the needle right now, and that's where they're going to stay for the time being. Michelle Schneider of the Market Gauge Group, always love having you on. Thank you so much.